Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. We're returning to our watery woman this week. Um, I've still been painting on her um, and she's a lot further forward than we're going to see in this week's video but we've gone back a little bit to show you the following on stage from last week's. So last week I talked about using um, a grid and scaling up the image from the original to the size of the canvas um, and then putting in these marker lines that we can see um, to indicate the shape of what we're going to paint and getting the scale of it right before we paint it. And so this week I'm doing the next stage which is marking out the colours, putting in the first layer of colour and getting the shape and form to the figure as I go. And I wanted to talk a bit about how I think um, painting instinctively is a good technique to try and learn. It's a hard one to explain, so bear with me and I will try and explain what I think um, instinctive painting is all about. It's something that um, is hard to explain because it's instinctive, because it's something that you either do or don't, but I think that you can learn it. And I think some painters do it without realising and others um, don't know how to even go about it because they don't know it exists because it's something that happens instinctively. So what I mean by this is that you paint in order to um, convey 100% the image that you're looking at there and then and not paint what your brain is telling you the thing is supposed to look like. When you're painting from life or from a photographic um, reference, as I'm doing here, I've got that same reference, by the way, um, on the iPad in front of me as I'm painting this. And I've zoomed into the face so that we can see exactly which bit I'm looking at as I'm painting it. And what I'm doing here is just looking and sending the information from my eyes to my hand and letting my hand paint what I'm seeing. And I'm not trying to let my brain tell me what the face is meant to look like. Our brains work in an amazing way in that they store all the images that we ever see and make a kind of database of information that we draw upon every second of the day. Every time we look at something, our brain feeds us the information that we already know about it in order to help us identify it and tell us if we need to know anything about it there and then whilst we're looking at it. So when we look at this picture of this woman's face, our brain is instantly feeding back to us without us even knowing all the information that we know about a face so that it helps us recognise that it's a woman's face and that she's uh, laying down and um, maybe that she's uh, got dark hair and we're making assum assumptions about who she is and what she might be doing um, and how that face is, is meant to look. Is it a nice face? Do we like it? Um, we're instantly being flooded with a lot of information about what we're seeing and in most areas of life that is very helpful. But when we're painting, it's actually the opposite of helpful. It's really hindrance because in order to paint exactly what you see, you need to switch off all that previously stored information about whether what you're painting is right. Is this color right here? Does her nose really look like this? You've got to switch that all off and just make a connection between your eyes and your hand. And it sounds very simple to do, and it's really not. It takes a lot of practice. And I call this instinctive painting because I think some people, like I say, do it without even realizing, and others have to really concentrate to do it. I think I'm one of those that has to concentrate. And I think, therefore, that it's easy to um, dismiss it as something that 
I can't possibly do that. <laughs> um, I, I can't paint like a, a painter because I just can't. And, and people think that that's the case, that you either can or you can't paint something that's in front of you and make it look like what it's supposed to. But because I, I have to concentrate to do this, I think that it's actually possible to practice and learn. And like with anything, the more you practice, the better you get. So, as you've seen, I've been painting this in real time and all I'm doing is looking at each little section of the thing that I'm looking at. And I'm trying to forget all the time that I'm looking at a face and that I'm painting a nose. And I'm just looking at the colour of the thing that I'm painting. I'm mixing a little bit of that colour on the palette and I'm putting it in the place where I see that it is on the photo. So here I'm painting around the nose. I've just put a light patch going down the centre of the nose. And now I'm working around it with a, a light skin tone. And I'm just looking at where that tone actually falls on the shape, on that face. And I'm putting it on the painting in the same spot. I've got my outline to work to, so that's giving me a, a guide as to where the edge of her face is. And I can still see those underlying grid lines, so I can use those as well, just to help um, with lining everything up. So here with her eye, I've got a, a darker shade of skin, tone, and I'm putting on, I'm looking at exactly where that, that crossover a grid line is happening in her in her eye socket and I'm lining it up with with my painting and putting in the colours exactly in the place that I can see them on that reference photo. I'm looking at the photo all the time, um, glancing back and forth to match up the colours with where I'm going to put them on the face. And all the time I'm trying very hard to just focus on those colours and where they are and not think about the fact that it's a face or that I'm perhaps not making it look as good as I could at this stage either. That's another thing to remember. So it doesn't have to look exactly the same as what I'm painting or what I'm looking at initially because there will be other layers going on. So I'm trying to ignore all of that conflicting information in my mind and just focus on what I can see. And initially, on this first layer, we are really going for um, a base, uh, an idea of the three dimensions of the face, the shadows and the highlights, and the colour. And I'm really trying not to worry about the smoothing at this point. Um, I'm using quite a thinned down um, oil paint so that it doesn't go on too thickly and that's so that because I know I'm going to do other layers over the top of it I can do that quite easily without having to um, go over ridges of paint and um, have it do some strange textural things to me. Um, I'm looking here at this shadow on underneath her nose um, I've got a nice sort of um, bluish shadow colour mixed up and I've put in just the shape of that shadow and it's really transformed the shape of her face and it's um, brought to life her, her cheek on this side. Um, and now the lips going on, I'm not doing this very carefully, again I'm just looking at where that darkest colour falls on her lips which is on the top lip and then on the underside of the bottom. Um, putting the highlight tones in where I see them. And I'm, I'm not doing it extremely carefully, as you can see. I haven't got a very small brush. It's a soft brush, and um, with that slightly thinned down paint, um, it's, it's blending in quite nicely as I'm putting it on. It's, it's creating a, quite a flat layer, which is what you want for a first layer, I think. Um, and I'm making sure that I'm I'm not leaving any white canvas as I go, so I'm, I'm mixing the edges of the, the different colours together uh, 
wherever they touch. Um, and that again, just make sure that you're getting a, a flattish layer. That shadow colour going in there now, it's forming more of a shape of the face. Um, you're getting an idea of uh, where the light's falling and where the shadows are being created. Um, and it's, it's sort of bringing it more to life. Shadows are so important when painting anything, but I think particularly with figures, um, just to give you the depth of, of colour to the skin, the skin is, is translucent in many layers and it holds an awful lot of different colours within it. And um, when, as you do your colour layers over the top of it, you're going to be adding on more and more different colours and that's how you get a really good skin tone, I think. So initially these base colours, um, the shadows are quite sort of purplish blue um, and that's quite a good base for, the, for those shadows because we're going to be going back over it uh, later on. So it's quite, it's not very smooth at this stage but I'm not too worried about that um, and I'm almost at the point where I've kind of put in most of the colour on the face. I can see that some really nice um, highlights and shadows that highlight on the um, lower eyelid is looking particularly nice to me at the moment. It really shows the shape of the face quite nicely. When I come back over this on the, the uh, second, third layers, I don't know how many layers I'm going to be doing, but um, I'll be putting in, I'll make sure that there's a, a little highlight in the shadow as well. Um, shadows, as I say, very important on skin there's always some reflected light back into the shadow at some point and um, that can often make something really pop and come to life if you can get that in. So I might be doing that now, I'm just putting a little bit of lighter skin tone um, back around under the chin and completing the, the edge of the face up to the those lines that I put in, which told me where the face was kind of the shape of it and where it was going to finish. I'm just going to put in a shadow here on her chin, I think, onto her arm, so that it tells me uh, the contact between the, the face and the arm. Am I going to do that? No, I've gone back. <laughs> I'm dancing around all over the canvas here, um, which is kind of exactly. Uh, what you should be doing. That's the instinctive painting. That's just me seeing a colour and, oh there I go, I'm doing the shadow underneath the face now. Um, I've just left a slight lighter patch the other side of that very dark shadow and it, that really makes it pop and stand out. Um, but yeah, flitting about all over the canvas um, because I'm just literally looking at the colour, where it's going and it could be the same colour on her chin as on her forehead, as on her nose. Um, I'm just trying to match up the shapes and the colours and really not thinking about anything else. Uh, it's a really, really good technique to painting. And as I say, I, I believe that you can practice this and you can learn it. And every time you do it, you're practicing because you have to concentrate in order to do it, in order to really look and ignore all that conflicting information in your brain and just look and paint. Make that connection between your brain and your hand. And keeping it is quite hard work. You just have to keep doing it. And over time, you'll find it easier and um, more rewarding. The more you do it, the more rewarding it is, definitely because it even surprises me when I see something like this come together and I think, um, wow, it actually starts to look like the thing <laughs> that you're painting. And that's such a nice feeling. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. This is just the first stage of, of the face and I wanted to show it in real time in order to talk about that way of painting. Painting instinctively, listening to uh, your eyes and not your brain. <laughs> um, 
I hope that uh, you'll take that on board and maybe try it yourself and let me know how you get on. This painting's got a long way to go yet and um, there's a lot more to paint but we'll be showing each stage and I'm sure I'll be talking you through and telling you different bits of information as I go along which hopefully will help with your own paintings. So come back next time and see the next stages and take care, happy painting, see you soon.